In this Debaco University video, I want to go over something that many people probably recognize, the 0.3 THC legal level between the distinction between marijuana and hemp. However, and I'm going to talk about why that 0.3% THC legal limit for hemp is technically flawed, looking at the original data uh, that was used as part of the study, as well as some new data. So join me on this video. All right, this is something many growers are very well aware of. 0.3% over or under that level for THC creates a major different distinguish in their end product. But let's go over why that number is actually flawed. So first off, this is the original uh, research article. Uh, it was published in 1976. I'll give you the link here and information. I'm gonna pull out certain excerpts from that article uh, so we can take a look at, at them in a little bit more detail. But this is the kind of, you can trace it all back to this original article, why we have that 0.3 THC level. And we're gonna talk about why it's flawed. So first off, that 0.3 THC legal limit. This is the level that is the make or break point if a cannabis plant is to be classified as either hemp or marijuana. This can be the determining factor to basically determine if the plant material can be sold or is a federal crime, at least in the United States. So how did this number come to be the standard? What made them choose this particular um, THC level? Well, the story behind the number, and here's kind of the great distinguishing factor, is everything is cannabis, whether we're talking about hemp or marijuana here. Since 0.3% THC limit is so well established, looking into the supporting literature to how it came about reveals a very interesting story. I'm going to show that here. The entire basis for this set point is based off only one article, uh, the one cited earlier, and I'll talk about. So that makes reviewing the data much easier. We don't have a ton of articles to look at. We have one particular one to investigate. However, once we do this investigation, the details might be a bit shocking to you. So first off, here's the um, excerpt from the article. Um, I'm going to have different quotes from that um, article here. I'm going to highlight certain points from that. So first off, it will be noted that we, uh, and we, so who is we talking about? Well, this is the two people responsible for the publication of the article, Ernest Small and um, Arthur John Con Conquist. Uh, we is both of them, and one's from the um, Ernest Small is from the Biosystemics Research Institute, Agriculture in Canada, particularly Ottawa, Canada, and um, Arthur John was from the New York Botanical Gardens. So this article is only composed of two scientists or authors. So it's not saying that only two people can't produce a quality work, but the research base is certainly smaller uh, than one would assume for this main only article really being utilized. I also want to just make note that these uh, two individuals were not the ones that put this into the law. They were merely the ones that published this article. Others then chose uh, to use this article as the sole source for the implementation of their um, laws and rulings. So we is referring to two scientists. Uh, then part two, we arbitrarily adopt. So arbitrarily adopt, and we see that in a scientific article, can be a little uh, concerning there. So arbitrarily is, means in a way that is based on chance rather than being planned or based on reason, and adopt is to accept or start uh, to use something new. So roughly translated, 0.3% THC level is based on chance more than reason and will be used starting now, and now uh, is 1976, the year the article was published, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but there's even more to this as we uh, continue to investigate further. So let's, uh, let's look a little bit further uh, down in the article. We arbitrarily know the adopt that 0.3% uh, delta 9 THC concentration on a dry basis in young, vigorous leaves. Uh, so the flower concentration was not even considered. Only the young, vigorous leaves of relatively, in quotes, mature plants. So I'm not exactly sure, you know, what their degree of maturity is. Are we talking about this uh, degree of maturity kind of over here? Are we talking about this degree of maturity over here? We could see there's distinct visual differences there. The, the key part here is they were looking at the vigorous leaves is what they were measuring for THC content, not the actual flower. 
So going on a little bit further in the article as well, uh, those young upper leaves, so upper leaves are the source of plate material tested. When it comes to testing final product nowadays, the final product that is being tested is the dry flower, um, not the leaves. So we're basing our information on an article that was testing the leaves, not the actual flower components there. So that's a major difference um, in distinction there. So this brings apart another article here, which is unrelated to the ruling, but I want to kind of bring this into light in this discussion. This is an article published in 2018. You can find all the information here, but I'm gonna pull out some information from this one. So they were looking at the accumulation of uh, the Delta-9 concentrations. We just saw here, we're using for our laws, articles based on testing the leaves. Well, accumulation of Delta-9 in two cannabis varieties here, um, Sour Willy and uh, Bonita Tree, uh, at days posted here. So they're looking at the THC concentration of the flower versus the leaf. And we could see that the flower is notably higher than the leaf concentration. So panels A and C, these two uh, right below me right there, report averages with a total of three plants. Delta 9 THC levels in flora samples is the solid line and leaf samples is the dotted line. This does show some of the variability. B and D, what is the two panels that are basically below me right now? I report the delta nine and the leaves are flora samples from the uh, from the um, top of the plant and the bottom of the plant. So as we know, higher up in the plant, you can have higher levels. Lower where they're not getting quite as much uh, light intensity, there can be lower delta nine levels. So let's take this even a step further here. Let's look at some of the actual data, and I'm gonna have to make myself kind of small here. So I don't want to completely disappear on you, but I'm just gonna put myself right in the middle here but on uh, the side over here. So we're looking at leaf cannabinoid content in cannabis plants cultivated in the greenhouse. So draw your attention here to the column all the way on the left. This is looking at the Delta 9 concentration of the actual leaves. Here we're looking on this other one. Over here is the inflorescence or the flower. We're looking at the Delta 9 concentration uh, across many different varieties here. Now the lowest level of Delta 9 THC here is 3.03%. Uh, and the highest level here in the leaves is 2.69% with a little variability there. So and we can see much lower, again, leaves compared to actual flower. You can see a great distinction in the different concentrations. And again, these are the same varieties are mixed up here because they're ordered based on Delta 9 THC levels. So a direct quote from this article now, the more updated one, they were looking at uh, Delta 9 THC levels in the leaf tissues were generally at least tenfold lower uh, compared to that uh, of the actual you know, inflorescence. There is some variability as expected, but in general, tenfold lower concentration THC levels in the leaves compared to the flowers based on this data. Remember that original article was testing the leaves, not actually even the flowers. So we're looking at, you know, why the 0.3 THC legal limit for hemp is flawed. You know, what's the real basis behind that? And hopefully this uh, data and information brings that to light, that there's current regu regulation of 0.3 THC as the federal limit, but this is based on data known not to be represented of practice. The original article was arbitrarily selected that level for testing for this is based on the leaves, which are shown to be at least a tenfold lower than the flowers. So currently flowers are tested and the percentage of THC to determine the classification is based on data generated at random and actually from leaf tissue. So how does this really make any sense is kind of how I bring that apart that just it's basically a flawed value. So if I take this another step forward with the data presented this would support the federal limit of 0.3 uh, percent THC level to going up to a 3% THC level from the actual flower. Well, let's maybe 10 times the current level based on the data, it would suggest this would be representative of what's being tested the flower compared to the current rules article based on the testing of the leaves there. If we were to take the original article that was testing the leaves and set that 0.3% uh, level with the flower typically being 10% more, well, 10 times greater, 3% uh, would be the actual flower concentration. Now, why would 3%, uh, what would this allow? You know, what if, if we did, you know, go up to 3% in the actual flower, what would this allow? Well, the major advantage would be 
offer is a more reasonable threshold to increase the amount of potential cannabis types that can be used as hemp-based production. 0.3% THC level really limits uh, the gene pool that a lot of growers have access to. This would reduce the current limits on CBD production as to increase levels of CBD, often THC will have some degree of increase as well in the plant. Research could be conducted on low-level THC for potential interaction benefits with CBD and terpenes. Though I do uh, end with uh, the end point here uh, that I do want to just, oh, sorry, over here is caution uh, should be taken for any user of any new product that will enter the body at any level. But if we're going to use that original article and really look at it that was testing the leaves, we want to expand that out to the flower with the research I showed it's 10% more. So that would support a 3% THC limit. I'm not saying that's the ideal limit to choose. I just want to provide everyone with background information on exactly where that 0.3% THC level was derived from and why that number is actually flawed.